Here's an example problem dealing with the orbital velocity law. Normally when we use the orbital velocity law we're talking about galaxies, but in this case I thought we'd try something closer to home, the solar system, and it'll give us a chance to check our answer. So Earth's orbital velocity is 29.78 kilometers per second. And that number looks kind of small because in astronomy you're used to millions and billions and trillions, but really that's 30 kilometers every second that the Sun is moving in its orbit. So it's actually pretty fast. We're also given the Earth's average distance from the Sun, and that's 149.6 million kilometers. So using the orbital velocity law with these two numbers, we can figure out the mass of the solar system within Earth's orbit. All right, let's write this orbital velocity law. And it says that mass is equal to radius times velocity squared, all divided by g. G, again, is the gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 meters cubed per kilogram second squared. All right, what are we going to put in for the radius? Well, we're given 149.6 million, just 10 to the 6 kilometers, and that's okay, and there's nothing wrong with that number, but we've got units of kilometers here and meters on G, so we're going to want to change the radius to meters. So let's first rewrite this in more proper scientific notation, which is 1.496, and now I've moved the decimal place one two times, so this exponent needs to go up by two, which would make it eight kilometers. And in order to convert this to meters, I'm going to multiply by 1,000 meters per kilometer. And we can write 1,000 as just 10 to the 3 meters per kilometer. Kilometers are going to cancel. And by writing 10 to the 3, it's really obvious that the only thing we need to do here is bump up this exponent by 3. So 8 plus 3 is 11. So the radius is 1.496 times 10 to the 11 meters. And I'm just going to put a box around this to make it easier to find later. Okay. The next thing we need to put in is the velocity. And let me just, just draw a line here so we don't get mixed up as far as what we're doing. The velocity, we were given 29.78 kilometers per second. And again, I'm going to rewrite this in more proper scientific notation, 2.978 times 10 to the 1 kilometers per second. I'm trying to squeeze this in. Sorry about that. Um, and I just want to do that because I like um, when we convert, just being able to play with the exponent on the 10. So if V is 2.978 times 10 to the 1 kilometers per second, and I multiply that by 10 to the 3 meters per kilometer, this time I'm just canceling the distance units, V is going to work out to be 2.978 times 10 to the 4 meters per second. And I'm going to go ahead and put a box around this, just so it's easy to find. All right, now I'm going to scroll down, give myself a little extra room here. And I'm going to rewrite the orbital velocity law, and this time put all the numbers in. So that mass is going to be the radius. Oh, shouldn't have scrolled quite so far. So 1.496. 10 to the 11 meters times the velocity, 2.978 times 10 to the 4 meters per second, and this is going to be squared, all divided by 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 meters cubed per kilogram second squared. 
So the first thing to do is to square the velocity. So I'm just going to rewrite everything else that we're not changing. And it turns out that when we square the velocity, I get 8.868 times 10 to the 8. And we square the units to, so meters squared per second squared. And this makes sense to me because I know when I square a number in scientific notation, the exponent should double. And it went from 4 to 8. So I think, I think we're doing okay so far. My next step is going to be to multiply the two numbers in the numerator together. So the radius times the velocity squared. And I get 1.327 times 10 to the 20. And the units now, I multiply them together as well. So meters cubed per second squared. And the denominator is still g. And now let's take a look at these units. I have meters cubed per second squared up here and meters cubed per second squared over here. Great, those are going to cancel. And then 1 over kilograms in the denominator. I can just rewrite that as kilograms. This is good news because after all we are trying to figure out mass. Alright, and the last step is to just take the ratio of these two numbers. And before we do it, I just want to take a second and let's, let's figure out what we might expect to get. So we're calculating the amount of mass inside Earth's orbit in the solar system. Well, the things inside Earth's orbit are Venus, Mercury, a few stray asteroids, and the Sun. Now the mass of the Sun is so much bigger than those other things that I think we should pretty much just get the mass of the Sun when we do this, this calculation. And sure enough, I get 1.99 times 10 to the 30 kilograms, which is exactly what the back of your book says the mass of the Sun is. So what do you know? This orbital velocity thing actually seems to work.